Hey friends, welcome back to the Godspeed Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to fix that pesky leak coming out your tail shaft. That's not what it sounds like. So once again, I'm finding spots on my driveway and old cars, I mean, that's one way to tell that there's oil in it. But the HOA kind of frowns on it, so it's time to fix it. Plus, you know, if you leak enough tranny fluid, pretty soon you won't have fluid in there. So generally speaking, you wanna fix your leaks. So the first thing we need to do is remove the drive shaft. So we're gonna jack up the truck so all four wheels are off the ground just to prevent it from rolling anywhere. So you can see the leak here at the tail shaft seal. And even in just a few minutes of my truck being parked in this spot, you can see there's already a drip spot. Very small, but it's there. In order to remove the drive shaft, we have to remove these four bolts here holding this U-joint in. And to do that, we gotta make sure we put it in neutral so we can rotate the drive shaft so we can access all four bolts. Just for safekeeping so these don't grow legs and walk off, we'll put these back on here. And then we'll also use some tape to tape up this U-joint so these caps don't come off and needle bearings go everywhere. So now to take this tail shaft off of here, there's these four bolts here on the side that hold it onto the main case. I'll have to take off the speedo cable as well. And in my case, there's a shift bracket on top, which we'll need to remove. So I ended up needing to take out the speedo gear on the tail shaft here in order to access this bottom left-hand bolt. Of course. Once you get all four bolts out, it should pop right off. Just like that. So with this tail shaft off, if we put it on this yoke here, and hold the yoke still, and see how much play there is in there. So if I just replace this rubber seal, there's no way in the world that rubber seal is gonna keep all the oil in there. So that bushing on the inside is way far gone. You can see how copper this bushing is. They're not supposed to be copper. They're coated with a malleable surface, much like all your engine bearings. And when they wear out, it starts to get down to the copper. This one is completely shiny and copper, hence why there's this big old giant wobble and why it's not sealing any of the oil in there. So first we're gonna remove this seal right here and you can pry on it with some screwdrivers or whatever. I would recommend just getting a seal pry tool I got this one at a swap meet for like 10 bucks. This way you're not damaging the case because this is aluminum and it's really easy to score it. We're gonna put this in the vise to kind of hold it in place so I can get prying on this. There may or may not be some sealant on this seal to help hold it in place. If it's having a hard time coming out, just apply some heat with a heat gun and that should loosen it up just enough to get that thing to pop out of there. You don't want to use a flame on this because tranny fluid is highly flammable. Just like that. So in order to get the old bushing out, we're gonna have to hammer it out of there. Now they do make a special tool for this, but I ain't got one. So we're gonna use a socket that's just about the same size as the bushing so we can hammer on the socket and push the bushing out of there. And before we try to hammer that out of there, once again, we're gonna hit it with the heat gun to expand the aluminum and break any kind of locking sealer that's on the outside of that bearing. There it is, got it. So what I discovered was this 30 millimeter impact socket was too big because it won't fit through the hole there. What you need is one that's big enough to hit this thing, but not too big to go in this opening here. So I went through a bunch of my impact sockets here. And what I found was the inch and 1 16th is just big enough. It's too small to fill that hole, so it'll go through there but it's just big enough to kind of push it through there. So inch and one sixteenth impact socket. So now we'll clean this bad boy up with some brake cleaner, make sure it's all good to go. And then we'll install the new bushing and the new seal. I am gonna add a couple of drops of this blue Loctite just for my own peace of mind because you want this to be in the exact right place and you don't want it to move around on you. And to press it in there, we're gonna use this oversized washer here. We're just gonna kind of go around and gently tap it to try to get it to go in there straight. Mm -hmm. 
once you kind of get to this point where the hammer is kind of getting down in there, you want to be careful that you don't hit the side. So we'll put the washer on there just to keep it from going too far down. And then we can put the 30 millimeter on top of the washer. That way it'll hit the washer and it'll stay flush. So it's flush all the way around, not in there all cockeyed or anything. So one thing you can do if you notice that now that you hammered it in there, there's a little bit of an edge, is just get some sandpaper or even a scotch Brite pad and you just want to knock that edge off. You don't want to get too deep into it, but just enough to get that edge off. So I've got a chunk of this old 600 grit sandpaper that's really kind of worn out and so it's not going to take off very much material. And all I'm doing is just knocking that edge off. You just kind of want to make sure it's not going to knock a groove into your yoke. There we go. Good to go. Now to install the new seal, you don't really need to put Loctite on this one and you don't really want to lube it because this paint from the factory is kind of what seals it in there. And you don't really want to hammer on this seal because that could deform it as well. So what you can do is use your old seal and hammer on that and it should make it go in there nice and straight. Boom bada boom. Now that the seal and the bushing is installed, we've got one more seal to worry about, which is this O-ring right here. And this wasn't leaking, but this is one of those while you're in there kind of a thing. And these are like three or four dollars. Really no reason not to replace it. All right, just like that, good to go. Now we'll install it on the truck and cross our fingers and hope for no leaks. But before we install it, let's try our wobble test again to see if it's any different with the new bushing. We'll just put a little tranny fluid on the rubber part of the seal to make sure it slides on there. And as you can see, no wobble at all. One other step that you could do, if your yoke is kind of rough and dull, you can kind of shine that up a little bit if you want with some scotch Brite. This one isn't too bad, but it is kind of dull. It's not a mirror finish like you see right here. That's kind of the color it should be compared to this where it's been rubbing over the years. I mean, I might opt for just leaving mine alone. So we'll just wipe this down just to make sure that that O-ring has a clean mating surface. You don't want to spray brake cleaner up in here. If you use brake cleaner, spray it on your rag because you don't want brake cleaner mixing with your tranny fluid. We'll put some Loctite on these bolts as we install them. Once you got these hand tight, we'll torque them down to 26 foot-pounds. Now we'll reinstall the Speedo gear. All right, done. Now we just need to drive it for a little while and see if it leaks. And there you have it. After a couple of weeks of driving this thing, there's no leaks. So my HOA can finally get off my back. If this helped you out at all, make sure you hit that like button down there. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the notifications. You can check out the social medias down here, get yourself a t-shirt over here, and I'll see you on the next one.